Air traffic control towers are a classic feature of any airport, but they could soon be a thing of the past here in Australia with the introduction of the Digital Aerodrome Service, or DAS. There's a plan for DAS to be used instead of air traffic control towers at three airports here in Australia. Sydney's newest airport, Western Sydney International, Ballin Byron in New South Wales, and Canberra Airport are all set to go digital in the next couple of years. But what exactly is DAS? Why is it being introduced here in Australia? And what are the advantages of digitizing something in the world of a aviation that's already been working pretty well to be honest up until this point. With a traditional air traffic control tower that you would have seen at many airports around the world, air traffic controllers sit inside that control tower, they monitor aircraft movements using the screens in front of them and supplement that by well, just looking outside the window and seeing what's around them. With a DAS solution, air traffic controllers monitor the same screens but they don't have a physical window because quite often the controllers can be hundreds of kilometers away from the airport that they're actually controlling. But even though they're not physically at the airport, they're still monitoring aircraft and movements through a series of 360 degree cameras and sensors that are monitoring activity and relaying that back to the main control center. Those cameras and sensors are often positioned on top either of the old control tower or on a bespoke tower that's actually being built for purpose, like the one that's currently being constructed at Canberra Airport. This one that's currently under construction is a 30 meter tall mast. And on top of that is where all of those cameras and sensors are placed that relay that information back to the air traffic controllers. The information from those cameras and sensors can then also be overlaid with things like the radar image of aircraft in the local area and weather imagery to give air traffic controllers good situational awareness and a good overall view of exactly what's happening at the airport, even though they're not physically sitting there themselves. One of the few reasons why this is being put forward is because of cost savings. If you have a digitized air traffic system, you don't need to have physical controllers working on site at an airport. You can centralize all of those resources into one central control center and have people occasionally working across different airports without having to physically go from one airport to another. That reduced infrastructure and maintenance costs ongoing does give quite a big cost benefit to the providers of the air traffic services in that country. Then there's the safety benefits because the cameras and sensors themselves, well, they can see better than the human eye. They can see in infrared, they can see at nighttime, they can see through low visibility conditions and give air traffic controllers a very accurate picture of exactly where aircraft are at any one time. Looking out of a window on a foggy day, you wouldn't be able to see that. There are also scalability benefits for regional airports, for example, that may be growing and require air traffic control services who wouldn't otherwise be able to get them. For example, it is quite expensive to build a physical control tower and staff that with air traffic controllers. It's a lot less expensive to build one of these masts, put in the cameras and sensors that are required and pull that feed back to the centralized control area and have air traffic controllers manage it from one centralized area. Now, DAS is not a new thing, even though it's new for us here in Australia, it's already in place in several other airports around the world. In the UK, Germany has three airports, Argentina, Brazil, Hungary, Norway, they all have DAS in operation. And probably the one example that most of us are most familiar with is London City Airport in the middle of London. Now their DAS system actually went live in 2021 and the controllers who operate London City Airport are actually based in the south of England, just down near the Isle of Wight, if you know the UK, around 115 kilometers or just over 70 miles away from the airport itself. But it does raise a few questions, let's be honest. And when I put a short video about the fact that Western Sydney International, the new airport that's being built here in Sydney, is going to be one of our first digital aerodrome service airports here in Australia, there were some honestly valid comments and concerns about the safety implications of digitizing an air traffic control tower. There are concerns about the reliability of network connections, for example. I mean, if your air traffic controllers are 115 kilometers away, what happens if the data feed between the airport and those air traffic controllers fails? I mean, the data feed between your eyeballs and the window, that's not gonna fail because the controllers are always there on site. But if they're not on site, again, what is being done to ensure the reliability off that data feed. There are questions around the cybersecurity risks. I mean, what are the potentials for someone to maybe manipulate that feed? Is, is that at all possible? And what's being done to ensure that that can't happen? And then of course there is the resistance and the concerns around change itself. I mean, is this a cost cutting exercise which is actually gonna reduce the labor force required? And therefore, is there a potential threat to the jobs and the livelihoods of people who work in air traffic control as this rolls out in the future. I think these are actually really valid questions, but for me, it really comes down to the fact that if you're looking for a 
perfect solution, that perfect solution doesn't exist. I mean, technology can fail and technology will fail. We all know we work in a technology world these days and things do go wrong. But then again, humans also make errors and we live in a world where human beings get tired or, or make mistakes and technology doesn't. It will do exactly what you tell it to do every single time over and over again. But as a pilot myself, I do also have questions about a digital aerodrome service in some of the ways that we've been trained to traditionally use an air traffic control tower. For example, if we have an incident where we lose radio communication with air traffic control, there is still a procedure that we're allowed to use to fly into an airport, letting the air traffic control tower know that we don't have radio communication. They can see that happening and then they will project light signals, actually different colored lights from the tower to us to tell us whether we're clear to come into land. I don't know how any of that is going to work if there isn't someone physically there at the airport watching you projecting light signals towards you. Now I assume that with the digital aerodrome service there is going to be very sophisticated camera technology that can actually zoom in on aircraft and lock into aircraft as well and actually bring that up on screen far better than someone looking through binoculars could ever see. And then the light signals, well, those can be projected from those towers anyway. We just look in a slightly different position on the airport. So I'm sure that's all being covered. There's just not a lot of information about it at the moment. Equally, if you fly an aircraft with retractable landing gear, there have been instances in the past where the landing gear cannot be deployed uh, or the pilot is not sure if the landing gear has been deployed at all because you can't see underneath the aircraft. So we are taught to do a flyby near the tower so they can look out and see what's actually the condition of the aircraft and whether we are safe and suitable to land. Now again, I'm assuming that the cameras can again lock into the aircraft, zoom in, but we haven't really been told any of this, again, because it's such new technology. So I am looking forward to some of those questions being answered so we can understand and appreciate this technology a little bit more as it gets rolled out here in Australia. I'd love to know your thoughts on digital aerodrome services. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this digitization of air traffic control. Maybe any unanswered questions you may still have about what is a digital aerodrome service and exactly how is it going to work. As I mentioned before, Western Sydney International Airport will have full digital aerodrome services when it opens in 2026. And if you want to have a look at that airport and also take a quick peek inside the terminal building to see what it looks like before it opens, check out this video here.